in the next short video fragments following this talk we clearly show two different system configurations one of 9 kg and one of 7 kg in the first part we show how we can control the increase and decrease of the weight of the system and in the second part of the 7 kg system we show how we can increase or decrease the weight of the system from 7 kg to 6.1 kg. On the video, we have clearly indicated current and voltages and the weight scale of the system. Due and for specific reasons, we do not show the full reactor system. But if one looks at the voltages and the currents, those indicate the internal gravitational system within, within its hemisphere and at the same time with a different change and a slight change in different parameters within the system we show the same system can lose or gain weight at the same point in atmospheric condition. We have achieved a full lift and we have achieved energy production through the same lift system. We cannot show all details due understandable reasons. At the same time, if one looks at the videos to follow, one can see we can control the weight of the system in hundreds of grams which this is impossible by known present knowledge in science. Thank you. Nine kilogram. So we'll start loading and see what the water is at one sixty one. Uh, in one minute, it's a heavy drop in the voltage in one go. Weight has gone up to 9.1. We, we do not expect much to introduce our innovation, so system is stable. Gas number two, we reach 151 and it stabilizes. Four fifty thirty three minutes. With a new combination, the weight has dropped to 8.7. So the magnetic fields are internally interacting. The weight is 7 kilograms. You see the weight? Yeah. So. Definitely, the weight, the gravitational field has totally, totally broken. System, 6.3 kilo. We have a clear center center. Clear, clear center center. Search is uh, 28 center is 15.44. The weight has increased, the current has increased from 118 to 124 and is dropping to 120. Interesting enough, the weight is 
All we done, we change the power input. Great starting is 6.3 and start. You see now the weight stands at 6.1 kilogram. It's the same loading, just that allowing the speed to come down. The voltage has been brought down to 10 amps and 65. You do not need, there we are, 6.1 kilogram. In viewing and what you have seen on the videos, it is clear we have broken the taboo of gravitational field forces under control. We think, as we have managed to break the first steps, a cooperation with any organization like Boeing or NASA or any other organization will open a new opportunities beyond man's imagination. We hope we can achieve and we hope we can attain landing on the moon within the very near future without the use of propulsion. The process in control of directional motion is in progress and we have achieved and we can understand how we can control movement vertical and sideways. There are videos of this such a control system which we will not show at this present time. At the same time this brings the opportunity of landing takeoff without detection at all time. In certain part of video you have noticed a blue radio. This radio has been placed to show that the system has the total capability of jamming and overcoming any radiation or blocking any radiation being radio frequency or radiation effects from cosmos. We will demonstrate this in more detail as materials to do this has already been achieved through our technology. We welcome any cooperation. Hi, this is Maya and I'm going to be reading Kesha's patents. This particular reading is the abstract from his first patent, the second version of his first patent, titled Gravitational and Energy System. And this patent number, if you wanted to look it up online, you can find it under W O two zero zero eight one one three three nine two A one. And I will put that information in the description field. Title Gravitational and Energy System Abstract A new method, process, and technology is described for how to introduce materials that can self-generate plasmatic conditions, plasma and plasmatic magnetic energy fields in the presence of ionization conditions and at room temperature and normal atmospheric conditions. This initial plasma condition, including the generation of voltage and current, can be enhanced by adding motion means. Then more turbulence rotation, compression, and heating of a gaseous matter is created in a reactor by at least one central rotative magnet field with the purpose of creating plasmatic conditions leading to the creation of various magnetic fields where at least the interaction of two magnetic fields would lead to the creation of at least one gravitational force phenomena. In a reactor embodiment, a chain of energetic events is created via a rotative magnetic initiation of a basic ionization of a gas, for example, hydrogen, which then triggers a controllable chain of energy transfers, scintillation, to the next following layer or layers of introduced gases, for example, helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, of all other introduced elements of the periodic table, lithium, beryllium, potassium, calcium, titanium, plutonium, etc., and or their introduced molecule combinations, for example, a vapor. 
A central column has magnetic means to start the process. Various concepts, applications, and products are described, such as space travel and atomic welding. For more information on other recordings that I'm doing or have done for Kesha's work, or for more discussion about Kesha's work, you can find links below that include links to my blog at mayagayam.wordpress.com. This week on the 21st Century Wire, we were invited to attend a lecture at Imperial College in South Kensington in London to hear a talk by nuclear physicist M.T. Kesh. M.T. Kesh is head of the Kesh Foundation in Belgium, and he himself is originally from Iran, and many of the claims he's made with regards to his research are very controversial, mainly because they threaten to turn the world of traditional physics and also academia completely on its head. And also Kesha's advances in anti-gravity technology and other air defense applications also threaten to make the military industrial complex as we know it today in 2013 completely useless. So we've gone to find out for ourselves, see if we can separate the fact from the fiction and hear what Mr. Kesh has to say for himself. Good evening, Mr. Cash. Good evening. Um, let's just start straight away. Yes. If um, I could ask you to introduce yourself. Okay. Um, first of all, I would like to say hello to you people at the Imperial College. Uh, I have a lot of good memories from the college. I spent a lot of nights sleeping on the sofas and chairs in that university <laughs> years ago. Uh, so, um, first of all, I... I come, as you know, from Iran, and my background is that uh, through the work of my father as a extra engineer with uh, Philips International in Iran in the medical sector, I was brought into the environment of radiation and the uh, world of x-rays and uh, that kind of equipment very early in my life. So. The question for me from the beginning was a lot of things don't make sense in what I was told and how the systems were working. And to pursue, to answer my own questions, I came to England as there was the pattern in those days. Uh, I went to Barnet College in north of London and then uh, did the first diploma in Manchester and then I graduated from Queen Mary College as a nuclear engineer specialized in design of nuclear reactors and so from the beginning I had an argument with my professors and my teachers in the university that the whole nuclear industry is upside down it's not working the way the universe works so the advice from my personal tutor, Dr. Shaw, was Mehran, do your work, get out and try to prove it. Here there is no room for new intelligence. So I stopped the work uh, with the British nuclear fuel and uh, I set out to develop a new technology the way the universe works, not the way it's been imagined and measured. So the consequence has been uh, 20 years of financing personally research and when I knew I have developed a final position uh, achieving uh, uh, gravitational magnetic fields, I stopped my commercial activities and my full-time life has been for the past nearly 12 years 
totally in developing and finalizing the stages of the system which flies and lives and operates the same as the universe does. is somebody who never understood physics. <laughs> Whoever came up with this uh, beautiful word, uh, he needs a Big Bang in his head. <laughs> so there was no Big Bang. Big Bang it was a very good thing for the guy who wanted to sell some books. And some people couldn't understand what they accepted. Uh, so it's the same as with the guy who came up with the black hole theory that nothing comes out of the black hole. And then he lost his shirt once he read my paper. I wonder when Professor Hawking is going to come and sue me. Because I've shown him, he has taken my paper, he changed his mind the day I received the paper from the uh, Astronomical Society in England on the 8th of July. And, funny enough, we published the paper in the book. So, these people who come up with these things, they have no concept of physics. As I say, bookkeepers should have stayed bookkeepers, and the people who don't understand physics should have kept their mouth shut. Could you tell us, uh, just briefly, your understanding of matter and how the classical model is um, incorrect? Uh, the, classical, the classical model is a lot of imagination. In the, in the, in the universe, for example, uh, when we can't understand them, micro and a macro, you can go from one to another. The scientists have made the plasma or the structure of the plasma the holy grails of physics. So because nobody can see it, they can imagine and say whatever they like. And this is the problem with the present physics. You've already, um, from what I gather, uh, created um, some craft which have the ability to travel at very high speeds. And I gather that you said that Mach 35 travel within the Earth's atmosphere even is um, conceivable now. Is that correct? The thing is, when you the, over Mach 35, you fall out of the atmosphere due to the curvature and the speed of control. Um, let me explain to you something very simple. The speed is the restriction of the state of mind. I don't know if you can see this magnet, if I can bring it very sure. close to you. Sure, yeah, we can see it. This magnet is exactly how uh, spherical conditions are. This is like Earth, this is like Sun. We have a state of mind as a magnet, as a bar. This is a bar. If we bring our mentality and understanding to the magnet, as a sphere like the universe is, like the stars, we don't see any rectangular objects in the universe. All the objects are spherical. Sun is spherical, atom is spherical, proton is spherical, every shape, the earth is spherical, due to the motion of the magnetic fields. As they come out of one end, they reduce, as they reduce their strength, the gravitational magnetic field of the center of the system pulls the field in, so they go back into it and they absorb more and they come back. If this is, let's say, the moon, and I have a craft, let's say, if you can see this little magnet. Sure. If you can see, very, I come close for you to see, you don't need to burn fuel to get attracted. You see, this is all it is. That's why the space agency has, space program has changed. Up to now, we were used to burning fuel to attain position and uh, speed. Now we can create the same situation, if that was very hard for you to see, I'll show this with another magnet, which is uh, very easy for you to observe, is you, you play with the magnets all the time, but we never considered it. You create the magnetic field of gravitation of the position of destination. There is no control in the speed anymore. This is what NASA has just recently come to understand, the game is over. So, uh, you can go at any speed to Mars, to Moon, as long as you can create a system which can create two things, gravity and a magnetic field. It's nothing new, 
is just understanding the process, the way the universe works, not the way our, our great grandfathers, our ancestors, when they came out of the caves, they looked at the birds and that, that, that was their ambition, to fly like the bird. We got that bird, we call it aeroplanes. We stuck two jets on it and we call it jet planes. I mean, and then we had our Chinese friends who came up with a firework and that firework in a bigger scale now is known as a propulsion game. It's the same thing as what Chinese Khan did in Iran hundreds of years ago, using the firework to break through the barriers. Now, we understand the process of the motion of the universe, and our system copies that. So we go in intelligence one level higher, then you understand as you create a stronger magnetic field interactions between the, the different layers of plasma or different part of the reactor, then uh, you match to the environment which you're traveling. So you can go by a factor of two, three times the speed of light, the beauty with this technology, as we see it now, is that because you create the same situation, same condition as Earth, you can create a 1G the natural way. So uh, in your environment of reactor, within a space of your system, you can create 1G the way we have on Earth. On Earth, we have a certain position which 1G and we live comfortably, we walk comfortably. And this 1G can be created in any, with use of any system, as long as you can control this gravitational magnetic field. So when uh, this is a game of astronauts getting into a spaceship, going for training for years, and being weightlessness, it's over, it's finished, it's done with. Because uh, we do not get trained to go to Heathrow Airport, to go to New York to get on a jet line because gravitational magnetic field, or we call 1G, is created by pressure in the cabin. Now we have learned how to create 1G naturally the way our planet does it for ourselves. So from now on, all of you in that auditorium, you're all astronauts. The only problem is, uh, this technology is devastating. This technology will bring short-term rapid unemployment, but on the other hand will bring a long-term large number of employments. And at this economical position, as I was told by an American diplomat, we cannot take such a revolution on hand. It will be total chaos. But on the other hand, the chaos is out now. People are replicating and they're building it. I'm sure very soon, within a matter of half of weeks, you will see European scientists who deliver the first uh, energy and the space reactors, the same as the, the Iranian government has done. It's in the position, I've seen some systems, because I get asked to look at them, and uh, European scientists are not very proud to do the first, uh, what do you call it, Maghreb systems. Uh, nuclear, does, with all the technologies that you have, uh, does Iran need nuclear energy? Of course, of course. We don't even understand 2% of the nuclear at the, at the heavy level. So since when, since when, we are not dictated to be told what we are supposed to understand? Why nuclear has to become exclusivity of certain nations? Why French are doing it? Why French have access to, they're spending millions in fusion? Why Americans doing it? Why other countries are doing it? Because something is very simple. I wrote on, the, on my forum. Are we enemies or friends? How come America, with the help of Israelis, are killing Iranian nuclear physicists on the heavy scale, on the heavy metals, and they ask for finance and help from the Iranian scientists in the plasma level? Because we developed the plasma technology much more advanced, according to the United Nations. Iranian nuclear physicists in plasma have been the top 15 leading, they've been a, for 15 years the top nation in that field. So why not? Because we don't understand, even the British don't understand how working nuclear industry in England. Why did we close all the gas power stations? Why there is more research now in England about how to shut down reactors than it was actually to develop them. So, uh, nuclear industry is a spectrum, we have to understand everything.
is not exclusive of nations. The nations who make uh, countries like Iran axis of evil because they are producing nuclear uh, technology, which we try to understand, is because they see competition. That's all it is. So Iran become acts of evil due to breaking into this cartel of uh, uh, processing, manufacturing, and assembling of the fuel. So Iran has every right, every other nation has every right the way the Russians and the Chinese are doing. Um, also, I gather that from your blogs, Iran is a world leader in isotopes in the medical industry in this respect. Uh, yes, we are. We, are, we, we didn't, but we haven't planned it. This, if you read my website, this happened by accident. This reactor was built for Iran during the Shah's regime as a prototype reactor, a university. Don't forget, we, in Queen Mary College, when I was a student, we had our own reactor in the basement of the university. In Iran, it's the same thing. They, they, they took, uh, when I was, when I finished in the university, they took the reactor to my land, and then it was too dangerous in my land, in the center of London, then they dismantled it, because it was too dangerous. It was in the basement of nuclear engineering department in the Queen Mary College. These are the same reactor which Iran has. It was put in there for beginning of teaching of nuclear physics during the Shah regime, and this reactor was used and has been used for prototyping. What happened about four or five years ago, when majority of the isotopes for medical reasons, uh, purposes, was getting manufactured in Canada, the reactor were running into problem. They could not come up with the supply, so Iran took the over the supply, the gap in the market. That's how Iran came into it with a reactor which was three years ago. So Iran produces isotopes from the systems which was built for us by the British and the Americans. And now it's such a lucrative market that the Europeans are building a system in uh, SCK in Belgium, financed by the German government, to cut into this market again. Because you cannot imagine how lucrative the isotope business is in medical. So and that's the reason Iran it just happened to be there by accident. What is the creator, if there is one? The creator is us, and we are part of it, and we are, he's part of us. Because if you understand, I just explained in the division of the neutron, then you understand it cannot be anything outside but what is us. We are part of it and it's part of us because it comes through the division. It's not a physicality because, uh, as you know, in the space technology we are very advanced and we, we have said it and we confirm it that we are not the only creatures of this universe. So uh, the creation is a natural process in different forms, but from the beginning it comes that we are part of his creator. So there are, in your view, definitely sentient beings on other... No, 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 that's my point. Okay. It's a fact. Thank you. Um, how many countries now have you given your USB stick, as you say? And under... uh, uh, at the moment, there are 15, but there is a plan through the governments who have received it. Within the next two months, we be at least double that. But the 15 nations which have received it covers 65% of the world population. Wow. The, 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 as you know, on the 21st, <laughs> 21st of April last year, we had the first ambassadorial presentation here in our center, where I'm talking to you from, and a number of ambassadors came. And after the 21st, I received a direct decree by His Excellency President Obama against my foundation for what we showed to the ambassador this technology is going to do. It was, I wrote an open letter, email of, on my forum, as since the President of the United States make a gagging order for scientists. And as you know, uh, it's well documented on our forum, on the 6th of November, on the American Election Day, after 345, when the American presidential office knew they won the election they were about to win, we received the request from the American government ambassador 
that they would like to meet and have the access to the technology on the USB key. And we met with them on the 15th of December by the request of the American government. Uh, and uh, we handed over the technology to the American government. And I mean, no, it was immediately transferred to NASA for further analysis. But something very interesting, NASA, I have communication, hard copy documents. We've been negotiating with NASA since 1985. The NASA always told me, that I, the boys at the top always told me, the problem we have, Mehran, is how are we going to write off 7,000 jobs in proportion lab? This is a problem. Now the problem is the technology is under a few nations, and as you know, a few scientists around the world are duplicating through the patterns. So the cat is out of the bag. We are out. It doesn't count by nations. Uh, as you know, certain nations have already shown the power of the technology. We work with a team of people who are devoted to serve humanity, and they made sure this thing goes through. So, you tell me about the peace treaty, I tell you one thing, is you who have to make that peace with yourself, then you can do with the rest of it. And it's very simple. The peace treaty has already sit in the White House today. The peace treaty will be in the hand of His Excellency President Ahmadinejad tomorrow or this week. The peace treaty is and will be in the hand of His Eminence uh, the Pope within a matter of days. As we said to with our USB stick key, we give the knowledge to every nation. What they do with it is theirs, their responsibility. This peace treaty is the same. Sooner or later, it will happen. And the way we see it, there are a lot of moves. Don't forget, it's only seven days old, this peace treaty, eight, years old, eight days old. And there are moves, and I see in the communication with me, some nations are fighting who's going to hold the 21st of April Peace Treaty internationally. They say it doesn't matter if our leaders on the 21st of March don't sign, we will sign into it. What does it bring? This peace treaty has brought people who believe in science can change. The problem with Cash Foundation is for the first time, with an organization like us, we are not talkers. Not only we talk about the peace, but we have the technology and the tool to enforce it. This is the beauty of what we do. When I came back from Iran with the invitation of His Excellency President Ahmadinejad to develop the Iranian Spaceship Program in 2008, when I announced that Iran has a full spaceship program on 2009, everybody laughed at me. They said the guy is crazy. In last year, the Iranian uh, Leaders, they said they have a spaceship program, and they've shown the power of it by capturing the American drone. I explained to the American uh, officials when I handed the key to them, for the first time they understood how they lost their plane. Because you don't need to spend a single gram of fuel. It was a clean cut capture, and that was, that was the end of it. But what has it brought? Now, the most advanced space, what they call it, military technologies has become obsolete. Are you going to pay 20, 30 million to buy an F-18, which can be dismantled from thousands of kilometers by a system which costs less than $100? No. So, we've seen how the force, we saw the power of it, we still see it. They stopped us on 25th of November last year to show the technology in public. They came and they sealed and they confiscated everything from us. And the following Saturday on the 3rd of December, we showed the reactors in public in, in Belgium for the first time. And I said, for what you did to us last week, blocking us to show, Iran will show the power of this technology very soon. On the 4th, the following day, the American plane was captured. And they said, oh, it's a lot of talk. But I'll give you the date. Go on the internet, 3rd of December, on the anniversary of us announcing 
how the part of this technology is going to be shown, a second plane was captured again. The dates are not coincidence. And as you understand, as I see, I've been told when I was interviewed last week, world leaders are saying who's going to start talking about the space program, the spaceship program. Because governments have this technology, up to now they didn't know how to run it. Now they know how to run it. But the beautiful of it, beauty of it is, this technology <clears throat> has been the cause of even talking piece. Please read the, not between the line, but the reality of what has happened. On 3rd of December, on the anniversary of our announcing the, capture, the development of the, the spaceship program, you had a second capture. We gave the key of the space technology by the request of the American government, His Excellency President Obama, on the 15th of this November to the Americans. On the 2nd of December, exactly six weeks ago, two weeks after we gave the key, an American private jet landed in Ahwaz airport, crashed, damaged. It was announced by the Iranians that the American plane was on the runway for two weeks and it's getting by the, repaired by the Americans. And they announced that the uh, passengers of this American plane were American were immediately transferred to Dubai. And that day is exactly from the day when Mrs. Hillary Clinton disappeared from political view till last week due to hemorrhage. Peace talk has already started in a very deep way. It's just who's going to lose face. And the peace treaty we put out is don't let nobody lose face. We all talk because you already have started talking. Because the Americans realize <coughs> that their lab most advanced uh, technology, military technology, worth nothing anymore. If you see, you, you talk about the peace, we talk about exactly what this technology has brought. Since the Yugoslavia war, we saw bombardments on the high altitude destroy as much as you can because you, before you go and rob a nation. We saw it in Libya too. It hasn't happened in Syria because Iranian spaceship program is protecting the aerospace and it's shown in some videos you can see. So they has stopped the invasion, he has stopped the attack of the, what was expected of Israelis on Iran because the information is available, you can check yourself. This technology has already enforcing peace. All we done with the peace treaty, we put it in front of their nose. a significant number of, I should say, influential Iranians who decided not to come tonight for whatever reason. And uh, there was, um, so I was quite worried by people having fear of, for whatever, you know, those reasons might be of coming tonight. But despite that, we had a very good turnout. I thought the reception was very, very positive. And even those who weren't scientists, I'm sure, got something from the talk. And uh, as I say to all the skeptics and cynics, you don't necessarily need to be um, a scientist to get things like this. I think one also goes on um, empathy and pathos and uh, whether you believe a speaker or not. I came today because a friend of mine uh, is working on a renewable energy system and he told me this would be a great place to come. Um, I'm very impressed. Uh, I'm here looking for uh, clean energy technologies and we've got a foundation which is designed to uh, make open source plans for them and create open source manufacturing. Um, people asked me, why did you do this? He must be paying you or you must have some vested interests. I would respond to that by saying if we all just did things on our vested interests uh, in some ways how poor uh, we would be and uh, I was mocked myself and ridiculed by uh, many in this audience who are what you would call mainstream they get their news from corporate media and uh, I had a lot of stick 
for doing this, uh, but uh, often being true to yourself and what you think about yourself is really more important than what um, others think about you. Of truth, passing it through three stages. Uh, what is it? Is the first one it is ridiculed? Secondly, it's violently opposed, and third, it's accepted as self -ed as self evident. And um, I would all I imagine in some ways that um, Mr. Kesh has a bit of all three at the moment. Well, what I think we need to be able to do is to get instructions on how we can build free power units so that a family in India can you know, start to pump their water without having to pay for gas uh, of, of a company that's you know, not doing such a great job. Uh, uh, yeah, so we don't have to go to war for these uh, petrochemicals. If we could learn how to do that, if there's a set of instructions for people to do that, that'd be very useful and we could know how we could use this. Uh, like, what is this going to do for us immediately? Theoretically, we've got really big um, uh, uh, implications in uh, nuclear technology and stuff but how that applies to the average person's life on how they can get food water and shelter and uh, the environment how that's going to stop destroying it like uh, it, it, I don't think it's clear how we are going to be able to um, uh, as individuals do it it's all of us it's a government it's something outside of us that's going to do it we need to have that universal responsibility and and be like okay how am I going to be able to make use of this stuff so for the individual I don't think the implications that great it's still a bit kind of like foreign and or alien kind of stuff but to actually bring it home and make it like um, uh, really big implications for our own life I think that will be when we can know how to use it and work it and, and it will be like a um, the power unit in the home or in the car uh, that's when I think that, uh, we have a real example that we can go and touch and feel and and, uh, and understand like we do the combustion engine it's just a little tiny step like another chink in uh, basically getting rid of the 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 armor which uh, is basically stopping all of us from having a much better life um, where we are uh, I think your um, audience will know we are slaves in this system and this gentleman is offering us um, some solutions and those who are in charge of this system have I think realized that their paradigms are coming to an end and they're going to have to find a good way of uh, not losing face uh, rapidly and events like this uh, encourage them to uh, rethink some of the strategies. I think it's got very big implications and when can I get the kit? <laughs>